835 in the Big 550 KTRS came out over the weekend. St. Louis Post-Dispatch reported that uh, Ellisville uh, is in the news once again. Walmart has decided to uh, back out of the uh, Sansone development. Um, I-, I think it was more or less like the development was finished, and so Walmart said, that's it, we're just going to stop trying. To uh, talk about it, somebody who's watched this thing very closely, David Stokes from the Show Me Institute. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. And this is this was huge news that broke in the post over the weekend. It was huge, but it was it's it's um, it was it was a done deal, right? I mean, it was it was all it, everything was done except the crying, right? I mean, it wasn't like Walmart said, "Boy, the people spoke." The 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 votes are in. They don't want it. We'll we'll go somewhere else. They were in. Until the last second that they could try and do it, and once they clearly were not going to be able to do it, that's when when they pulled out. Well, I think they weren't going to be able to do it, and they really being more the developer than, than Walmart here. They weren't right. going to be able to do it now without litigation. And I think they would have had a good chance of winning in litigation. I'm Not that I would have been rooting for them. Right. But it was at this point, they weren't getting the CUP, the conditional use permit, and there were the other... Things that they were still going to have to ask for that they weren't going to get from the the new city council, and I think it was going to involve very contentious, bad PR litigation for all involved. And, and Walmart clearly, probably for re- reasons related to that, pulled out of the whole thing. Uh, also, though, but they 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 never secured all the land they needed for the property. It just the more you the more you followed this, and the more you looked into it, the stranger the whole thing. The stranger the whole situation got, like, it's, it's supposed to be a done deal. All right, the city council's approved it. You have the TIF, all that. Well, you don't actually have all the land. So now you're <laughs> continuing to ask for, you have to go back and, and ask for more things and more changes. But the city council's now now changed. And so they've got a right not to, not to approve these things. And the, that would have been hashed out in litigation. And it would have been, would have taken years. It would have been ugly all around. It looks like with Walmart pulling out, hopefully this, this just really awful saga of, right. of democracy in St. Louis County is hopefully coming to an end. Uh, but, uh, I mean, what a, what a quagmire. Some people sell out. Some people aren't selling out. They were then going to use eminent domain to kick the rest of the people out, which would have been, I don't know if you could have gotten any more of a PR nightmare, but then kicking old ladies out of their apartment in, in Ellisville to build a Walmart would have been, I mean, that would have been even worse. Um so, I mean, this was poorly planned from the word go. Well, you hit upon the, the biggest point there, and this is really why cities should not do these types of projects, <laughs> because it was the, the government got involved and passed the subsidy, the TIF, and sure, some people sold and some people didn't. And it's a story we've heard repeated in, in St. Louis before. I mean, this is what happened in Sunset Hill. Right. This is what happened in Rock Hill. This is what happened in many other parts of, of our community where, you know, if only the if it's only a free market movement where somebody wants to buy and expand and some people choose to and some people don't, well, that can all be hashed out over personal negotiations, and that's how business works. But when you involve the government and these tax subsidies, which force everybody to pay for it, whether they want to or not, it just takes it to a whole new level. And and thankfully, eminent domain hasn't been enacted here, and, and we really never thought it was going to be. But now it turns out with people, if Santone still goes forward with it, they Maybe could've. they can. Yeah, yeah. Even though that eminent domain was something we didn't make much of because it didn't look like it was going to be a part of it. So it, you, if you want a central lesson to come out of this, and and maybe at the risk of oversimplifying it, for for me, David Stokes, I would say cities do not do these types of enormous TIF retail developments. You don't know what you're doing. Let private businesses do this themselves. You have to think. I mean, you really need to look at what it. it this wasn't. I mean, this was a bitter fight, so bitter, they threw, they impeached the mayor who who ran on an anti-TIF platform. He wins. They then impeach the mayor. He, the, a court puts him back into office while this is still going on temporarily, and then ultimately when the court lo- looks at it, says, yeah, no, he, he's fully reinstated. I mean, that's some legendary stuff. For a, a mayor to be impeached and then to be put back in by the courts, that doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often at, at all. I mean, there's, there was a lot to this story from the beginning that uh, that you were able to tell that there's something big going on here. There was a lot of times with these projects around Missouri, you find a committed group of activists opposing it. 
Well, in Ellisville, you had a very large, especially committed group of activists opposing it. And what's more, you just had the average Ellisville person seem to be opposed to it as well. And for some people, it was about the Walmart. For a lot of people, it was about the tax increment financing. For, right. for me, it was always more about the, the subsidy and the tax increment financing aspect of it. But it really then, you, when you bring in these things of, of eminent domain, as we say, which might have come into play in the end anyway, and, and zoning changes and subsidies, it really it can make for a nasty situation. And when you had politicians like you had in Ellisville willing to ignore the obvious will of the people, who clearly the vast majority of people in Ellisville did not want this subsidy and this project, yet they're still going forward with it. I mean, that's a recipe for the, the real nightmare that you've had there for the past year. As much as it's a nightmare and as much as it's been we've made fun of it and laughed at it, there is an underlying, and I know you can, uh, you'll can you uh, agree with this, there is an underlying uh, good story in this, and that is you can fight City Hall, right? I mean, the, the residents so didn't want this that they figured out a way to beat back um, the developer and Walmart. And almost it, it, it's a David and Goliath story in which the citizens beat back City Hall. And that is the that is the, the great thing to take away from it. I mean, if you are committed and passionate, you can, you can win through democracy. Now, it's not supposed to take two elections necessarily <laughs> to do it. I mean, the, the message should have been sent through the first election where— I believe 75% of the mayoral votes went to anti-TIF candidates. I mean, that should have been a message the city council took. The people of Ellsville don't want this development as it's being done currently. Right, yeah. And we can debate whether, uh, clearly for some people it was, as I said, about the Walmart. Clearly for a lot of people it was about the TIF. Right. And 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 that's fine. Some, people, it it was, some people it was about um, – kicking residents out for retail, which in some ways, don't you want people to live in your neighborhood? Absolutely. And, and for some people, I think it was about once they saw how it was being done, they became opposed to it. They, they might not have been so exercised about the, the simple project in the beginning, but when they saw it being rammed through and the, the, the impeachment and the, and the total failure to listen to the voice of the people, in my opinion— uh, some people got exercised about that, justifiably. We've had a couple of um, uh, people have, or a couple of projects have not gone through. Go back a couple of years in that Brentwood there on Manchester, they were wanted eminent domain to sort of uh, take apart that city block, even though every single business, there, was, there wasn't an empty uh, bay in that entire area. You had Sunset Hills, now you have this one. This one was probably the biggest um, the biggest splash, do you think going forward communities are going to say, hey, wait a minute, that was such a mean fight in Ellisville. Maybe we don't want to pick that that fight here? I hope so. I hope you're right. I'm not optimistic on the whole. I think some cities will, we're, as we see, because it's not like Ellisville has just happened in one instance in Missouri. We're seeing groups opposed to subsidies for for various businesses, not just Walmart, right. subsidies and these types of enterprise zones and TIFs, we're seeing that spring up more and more around the state as more and more Missourians and St. Louisans get the message and understand that this is not good economics. That said, the way you have the system set up for the sales tax pool in St. Louis County, it is still, if you're a point-of-sale city that keeps the vast majority of the sales taxes within your city, I mean, the, the incentives to give away these TIFs and subsidize this retail development to, to give away the property tax dollars of the school district and the fire district and the county and a little bit of your own in order to get a significant amount of sales taxes that pretty much just come to the city, that incentive is very strong and very dangerous. And I am unfortunately think we're going to see more examples like this going forward. It'll be interesting to see. The one uh, TIF, uh, that Hanley Township, where that Menard's going in, um, they're not. They said they would not do it unless everybody agreed. There was no eminent domain there. There wasn't any eminent domain. So I guess that's that's not as bad as some of the other ones where eminent domain has been used. Well, we have a video up on that at showmeinstitute.org. You can go and search for Hadley Township. We have several videos telling that story. Eminent domain was used earlier in that overall project, not by Menards. Mm -hmm. So I want to be be very clear in my language here. But that's been such a disaster. That's gone on for 10 years. Right. You talk about a community where some people sold. Because Menards is like, I believe, the fourth or fifth developer to try and fin finish this project. 
prior developers had eminent domain rights. Some people sold to them. Some people fought because they wanted to stay, which they have every right to do. And you really helped devastate that community. As if you're, if you want to stay, but you're worried you're going to be victimized by eminent domain, you're not going to put ten thousand dollars into a new roof. Right. And over years and years, this becomes a real detriment to a, a neighborhood. And I would encourage people to check out the video. As as much as in the end, it's great that Menards is not exercising eminent domain and reached an agreement with the people. Hadley Township is still a good example of the harm that really comes from these types of developments. Not to mention. The Menards is going in across the street from Home Depot, down the street from the Lowe's. <laughs> well, I live pretty close to there, and, and if and if I have any, you know, home improvement needs, I, I know where to. I know there's about a half mile area where I can go and probably satisfy them. Not to mention Bob's Hardware Store, which had been there for 800 years and you know fixed everything from your grandfather's bike to the screen door. He's long since been run out of business by these tiffs because the, his town de- decided to go with a big box store as opposed to him. Absolutely, and it's important to, r- to remind your listeners that that Home Depot, that Lowe's, and now the Menards, all three of them were subsidized by, by taxpayers, by yeah. different cities, Brentwood, Maplewood, and now Richmond Heights. Yeah. We, taxpayers around the community paid for that. Clearly, you didn't need to subsidize any of it. There's a market for home improvement goods on <laughs> Hanley, apparently. <laughs> David Stokes, when can we read you? When can we see you? Well, you can see a lot of information on tax increment financing and these types of subsidies and eminent domain and a Hadley Township video and lots of Ellisville stuff at showmeinstitute.org. You can go buy a car at Johnny Londoff Chevrolet, the Chevy Cruze 4x4.